am Holly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hey, everybody, happy Wednesday. We are having a busy one around here, but it's oh, good, yeah. right? Yeah. It's what are you guys good. up to this week? Oh, just <laughs> working on fall. You guys are obviously gearing it up for fall. Oh, yeah. Filling up the shelves from the, the workshop we had, which oh, was a lot of fun. That was, didn't it feel really right just having people here? It was oh, yeah. Everyone was, it was so, so sweet. Good. Yes. Yeah. So Everyone was sweet awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. Mm-hmm. What about you, Hannah? What's up? Oh, a lot of stuff. Definitely, like they said, the fall and the holidays. We got lots of greens and reds and whites and mm-hmm. fall colors going out. Mm-hmm. So y'all are keeping us busy. We're we're ready to see where the rest of this year takes us. That's for sure. Yeah, and I think so. Pretty soon here, we're gonna start decorating the the shop for fall, which is exciting. So we've dug all our stuff out, and we'll be sharing some things over the next few weeks mm-hmm. and give you guys some more fall inspiration. And we're gonna do a fall open house too. We yes, it's gonna be so us. much fun. Yeah. Yeah, the first Saturday in October, if you happen to be local or live nearby, we're just going to do an open house on the first Saturday of October, and we'll just do some free make and takes for whether you're little ones or adults. Oh, and wait, you know what else is news? We we have some openings in Don Edwards' class. Yeah. So next month, Don Edwards is coming for nano felting. We're going to do scarves, but really you're going to learn how to make a lot of different textures and techniques. So you might want to look at our website under Learn for openings in her class because we just had a recent opening and that is back available. And you're welcome to call us too. Oh yeah, That's and good. Dawn's awesome. amazing. Yeah. She's, she's a great teacher. She <laughs> is very very patient. So we're going to say <laughs> hi to some people and. And then I think Fairy Hand is going to show you a few things. So thanks for being here, y'all. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, everyone. I want to say hi to a few people. I saw uh, there's Wyoma Klaus uh, saying hi. You'll see some of our veteran friends just saying hi and where they're from. There's Kim Van Wardenberg. So speaking about Dawn, she says she is amazing. Um, Claire is in SoCal and Sis Hewitt is in Alberta, Canada. There's Kimberly Poli who was just here this week and Joanne Stratikos. Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Um, today we are working on Full Moon Kitty and my sky in this one, which was my test, happens to be like uh, purple and pink. So this is what we're doing today for our little um, felt along project. And But before we jump on that, Fairy Hannah pulled together or the girls pulled together some colors that you might look at for doing a midnight sky or a blue sky. And so I'm going to let Hannah show you that. Hi y'all, how are you doing? So like Marie said, I've got some blues in our MC1 fiber pulled together for y'all. I know y'all are busy with the greens and the reds and the fall colors, but since we're kind of focusing on skies today, I thought it'd be fun to put some blues together for y'all. So kind of my thought process in this was going to be, this is kind of our, our nighttime sky, maybe our afternoon cloudy sky, and then maybe morning and I know I'd love to throw some oranges and pinks and all that in there too but today we're just going to focus on the blues so for the morning we've got three of our kind of softer toned blues pulled together this is going to be our chicory which is one of my favorite colors we've got carnival and winter blue on this one we've got dusty blue this is going to be blue frost and Egyptian blue which is a gorgeous fun blue And then for our darker tones, we've got Blue Azul, Majestic Blue, and Cobalt. So of course, blending all those together make a super fun sky and probably throwing in some oranges and some pinks, like I said, would be pretty fun too. But I hope you enjoyed those. And then I'll bring Marie back for y'all to get felt in. <laughs> Lots of hearts on that, Hannah. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for being here, everyone. So, Fairy uh, Anne is out today, so uh, we are flying solo without here and thank you without her here. So, thank you for being here, y'all. And I want to let you know that we created a page for this project, and I won't be able to link to it right now, but you can search hashtag Full Moon Kitty, and I'll post a link after we're all done. You can download just a little PDF. And it doesn't give you the instructions, but it does tell you the basic supplies we're working with today. 
And it also gives you some little templates that you can use if you want to, you know, just do the same size project that, that we're working with. And that's what we're going to do is cut these out of cardstock so you can see how to do that. How we're, how we're going to use those. Um, great. Okay, so y'all are liking those blues and the colors. Uh, Marjo says the sound has gone, but the sound is uh, working for us. Um, <laughs> thank you, Carolina, about my glasses. So I'm hoping everyone can still uh, hear us. I saw some people say sound is gone, but I don't know if that is actually Facebook um, because we're registering fine here. So we're just going to go ahead. I wonder if it's Facebook that's having issues uh, with the transmission on the voice. Um, when you do hear the voice, is it loud enough? That would just be the only thing I would ask, is when you do hear the voice, is it loud enough? Okay, so I'm going to turn down uh, so that you all can look at my desktop here. Here we go. Okay, so here is Full Moon Kitty. This is the little project that we're doing today. So what we're working with is our one millimeter white felt sheet. You could do any color. You could do this on black or lavender or blue. Um, and this is just very thin. It is 100% wool felt. So it is different than you get at the craft store. The craft store felt is um, usually like an acrylic or a polyester, sometimes even recycled plastic. But what you see is that uh, those tend to be a little more resistant to the puncture of the needle and they're actually thinner even though they feel like they're about the same weight so don't be surprised if you do spend the money on 100 percent wool uh, felt sheets and find that it's just easier and works better cool okay so i'm going to watch for your comments as we look here and let me show you the colors i have of course, we are working with our MC1 wool batting, and these are the colors that I'm going to work with today. We have indigo, which is a very nice deep color, true violet, which is a nice purple, red indigo or pomegranate or ruby or any of those colors are really fun to blend in. This is berry for a really fun pink, uh, lemongrass, bamboo, cotton white, and black and then if we have time we'll bring in a little fiber mishmash for our grass for those of you who haven't worked with this fiber before our mc1 this is our mc1 batting it is all domestic sheep this is uh, exclusive to living felt we have about 90 odd colors and it's really great to needle felt with it's a short crimpy fiber needle felt nice and smooth and um, yeah, a lot of people like it. I hope you like it too. So this is what we're gonna work with today. And I am just watching your uh, comments. Um, and it's y'all, it sounds like Facebook is going in and out of sound. So we're just gonna progress. We do record this show uh, for posting on YouTube. So make sure that you join us on YouTube. It's just youtube.com slash livingfelt and uh, subscribe we always upload the show there if you if you miss it and i'm just going to park this guy off to the side just for a second what i've done from my template is we've cut out the full moon and we've cut out kitty you absolutely can freehand these designs but if it helps you can cut out a little template and i'm going to show you how i use these guys um, get this off to the side and here is my uh, wool felt sheet. If you're filming along with us today, if you're going to make one yourself, would you go ahead and maybe uh, say hashtag felt along so I know that you're joining us today. I'd love to see if you're going to uh, begin this little project with us. The first thing I'm going to do is, you know, sometimes I sort of trace out my perimeter and I trace out a little square. I haven't done that today. We'll just kind of eyeball it. When you get this batting, when you buy, this is a two ounce roll and that's the minimum increment it comes. It's going to unfurl into this great big lofty bat. It's nice and thick and you can split it to many different thicknesses. We're just going to use a start with like a little single thickness. I'm going to pull off just about that much 
and you can just separate it just like that. So a th single thickness is what I pulled off for my moon. And I'm gonna lay out the wool, uh, I'm gonna lay out the wool just a little bit bigger than my circle, just like this. And you can make your moon as thick or, th or thin as you want. Since the background is white, I'm gonna start with this. Uh, this single thickness and if you there's just a little area in the middle you want to add a little more notice that you can just pull off little fibers and drop them right in there so I'm gonna put my moon template down and I want the fibers to trail off of the template just a little bit so we'll have a little bit of overlap onto our sky we're gonna use this template a couple of times you could also use a lid or something like that that you have around the house that's the size that you want. And I'm going to use today, this is the Clover 8900. It's got five needles in it. It's just great for, oh, I chose one that's not loaded. Ha -ha. <laughs> it is great. They've unloaded all of ours for storage. <laughs> They, the 8900 is great for tacking down something like this, but I guess for safety's sake, the fairies tucked those all away without any needles in them. I should have looked. So I'm gonna use three 42 triangles rubber banded together and just get this tacked down. With this project, what we like to do is we're gonna kind of, uh, we won't finish each section 100%, You'll go back and refine to get out all of the needle marks, and we'll talk about that. Right now, we just want to get our moon in place, and I know that's probably a little challenging to see, but if we put our moon in first, then it allows us to splay all of our fibers out nice and neat, just like this. And I'm looking for your comments. Uh, watch as you comment. So as you comment, uh, Fairy Hannah will be writing down your names. And at the end of the show, we always give away prizes. So feel free to chime in. You might ask a question. You might let us know what you do differently, a technique that you found that works for you. Okay, so I basically have my moon in place. And sure, we can go back and add uh, dimension to our moon we could add some misty clouds over it or whatever but we're gonna get our kitty in place first and before we do kitty I want to get our sky in so this is the real point of the circle right now using our circle it's gonna be a barrier for the rest of our sky I'm gonna start with this super pink this is called berry I love this color and your sky can be any color. Like ha Hannah shared um, the blues. You might go for a blue sky. You might go for a pure black sky. You might go for an all midnight sky. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna pull off a little bit here. Um, and I just decided to go with a pink and purple sky. And I remembered last night I was working on this that there's a fun project in uh, Danny Ives' book uh, with the night sky in silhouettes too. So I brought that along and I'm going to show that to you. Now notice I was able to just pull off a little tiny thin wispy strip. Very thin. And I just want a little bit of a pink glow right around my moon here. So I'm laying the fibers so that they go over the resist. This is acting as a resist a little barrier, if you will, and using a single needle and holding my moon in place, I am going to start needle felting these fibers right down adjacent to the moon. And this is gonna give me a really clean outline. Now, all of these fibers here that are sticking up Use your needle and tuck them out this way. When we're blending, you don't want a hard line on this side. We want everything to blend this direction. So use your needle to tack them down in that direction. And if you want, you can fold this one that's right against the moon. Just fold it back with your finger. We do want a very clear line on our moon. 
And you might not want, but we can come back and add just a little wisp of uh, white or cotton or light aspen gray around this as well. So here the cutout is just acting as a resist, so we get a very clean line. You could use a cookie cutter for this if you want. I often use, like this project, um, the initial shape was a mason jar lid. I always just save round shapes for guides in my studio. I keep them on hand. Um, I'm reading some of your comments here. Some of you are saying it's late in the UK. <laughs> um, then felt the moon over the sky. I put the moon. I put the moon in first this time so that you don't have to coax the fibers. Um, so now the moon is already in place, and we're just going to get all the rest of these fibers to lay down. Mm -hmm. So that was our resist, and now we don't need this, this piece anymore. We can build our sky. And I usually like to make my pieces and then cut them out later or have this to wrap around. So you can let your, you know, your design go just as far as you want. What we're going to look at are a few different ways to blend your colors. What I brought in, you can use colors just as they come straight off, uh, straight off the roll and blend them together. It's often helpful to start with your darkest colors and then go lighter. In this case, I wanted to solidify the center of my design or the focal point, and we will now cause the two areas to meet. The dark, it's gonna be darker up here in the sky and get lighter down towards the moon. So we can even put a little bit of haze around this in just a minute. But let's plan our color, our color gradations going in. And I'm not going to do it exactly like uh, this, this model. This was just my first test to see if I liked doing the moon with the resist this way. So we're going to start with our indigo up in the corners. And remember that you can peel this stuff as thin as you want, this stuff being our MC1 batting. So even though it comes in a great big roll, you can peel off like half the thickness and oftentimes that's all you need. How do you know? Well, if you can't see through it, that may be all you need for your project. So I'm gonna go ahead and just peel this back and I'm gonna take about half of this. We won't use that much. And let's plan to put, we're gonna put the indigo kind of like here. I'm gonna give this just a little bit of an arch so the indigo can extend beyond the top. It can extend beyond the top of your layout if you want. And I'm just gonna make it kind of thick, thick towards the top and taper down a little bit because I don't want my piece to be too bulky. I want to taper the weight of the wool where I'm going to blend in another color. And all I want is to not see the white of my, I don't want to see the white of my background underneath this. And it's okay if it extends over, you don't even have to needle felt that. But if you want to end up wrapping this around something or mounting it in another way, then it, you'll be happy that you have a little extra. I'm going to take a little bit of this off and this is, you know, there's any number of ways to do this. So just play, just play with the ideas. Now I'm going to move to a little bit more of purple. I'm going to, um, our angle is going to kind of go like this. I'm going to move a little more to purple, but it would help if we can blend the purple and the indigo. So there's a little better of a transition. So I'm going to take a little bit of the indigo and a little bit of the true violet. I just call it purple, but true violet. And I'm gonna blend these two together. Now there are so many skies you can look up and model, and this isn't even really modeled off anything real. Um, so you can pick a sky to model as you wish. Um, use a photograph, 
that you've taken yourself or that somebody else has. Um, so I have some indigo and true violet and I'm going to start tearing it and stacking it and blending it. I'm just going to blend this little bit by hand. It's going to get small. It's not going to be this great, big, lovely bunch that we just had. I know a lot of people don't have hand carters or drum carters, and I did bring mine in today, um, so maybe we can look at how that would be different. But I also want to show you just blending by hand. You could blend smaller amounts than this, or you could start like this and then work it a little bit smaller as well. This is a real short fiber bat. You might do this with a longer fiber, but the key is not to tear the fiber. Back your hands up so that it just glides apart, just like I'm doing now. So I've got two big bunches, and I can get a little more refined by making that bunch smaller. And all I'm really doing is making a mini bat. Since these fibers are short, you don't have to keep them all going in the same direction. And notice that I just restack and twist and evaluate the pile. I don't really want it to be all homogenous. For me personally. If you want it to be completely homogenous, you can keep blending or you can run it through um, a drum carter or use your hand cards. But I'd like it to have a little bit of variegation. So let's blend. I'm going to keep blending this and I'm going to read uh, maybe what some of you are saying. Um, and I'm going to just see. <laughs> Y'all are talking about fall. Liz says, what does MC stand for? And MC stands for Merino Cross. Um, and that is our trade name. MC1 is our trade name for this fiber. And let's see, what else? Hi, everyone. Maxine is felting along. Hashtag felt along if you are felting along with us today. Hi, Kristen in Michigan. Heather says, the sound is good. Um, could you use the same technique for sunsets? Absolutely, use the same technique for sunsets. So hand blend, use your hand cards, or use a drum carter. So why don't, I think we have a little bit of time here. Why don't we look real quick at the uh, hand cards? And I just wanna show this first, and it's fun for it to be mixed up and variegated. You can even take some of this. We'll take some of this and we'll blend some of the pink into it as well. Um, so that it's not just one thing. If you're wet felting, the only thing I want to say is if you're wet felting, what's different about wet felting to needle felting, when we're needle felting, everything is being punched down from the top. So the migration is only happening from the top down. If you were to make something to needle to wet felt, you wouldn't use this as a base, you would use unfelted fiber. But if you were to wet felt, what happens is the migration happens both ways. So if you're wet felting this, then this would also come up through what you lay on top. So you definitely want to lay darks underneath with the lighter colors on top. That's the difference if you're wet felting. And I will keep watching for your questions. Um, okay, let's look at the hand cards real quick. So I brought in, these are the Ashford uh, hand cards that we uh, sell and use here in the shop. And these are, I like to use them on my leg. Notice that this has a nice little curvature. Um, you can rest that on your leg and it also helps with a nice rocking motion. So if you wanna blend, if you wanna blend these same two colors like we've been doing, my encouragement is to start with a small amount first so that you get used to it. So normally I rest this on my leg and I would just put little bits of fiber right on the cards. And then I might put the second color right on top. You don't want the fiber to go up past this point because what happens is it starts to form a shelf up here and it's kind of unpleasant. It kind of folds over on itself. So just start with a little bit at first. This is still gonna make a little bat, but it will blend it a little bit better. This hand goes under, this hand goes over, and I'm gonna just start by taking the lower fibers off. Flick my wrist, pull through the teeth, flick my wrist, pull through the teeth, flick my wrist, pull through the teeth. 
So it's kind of like a little rocking motion. You'll empty one paddle onto another. Now people who are real skilled will transfer the fiber without switching hands, but it's okay to switch hands. We're pulling the fiber off without grinding the teeth together. And the reason I flick my wrist is so that um, the fiber doesn't get caught underneath. So let me show you that. We just pull through and flick. And as the fibers, notice how they're trailing off. If you get them caught underneath, they'll fold under and buckle on you, and then you kind of have a mess. But notice how fast this blended up into a pretty little homogenous bat. It is so great to use hand cards, and a drum carder would just um, give you a longer and wider bat depending on how that drum is set up. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing some people support each other and tell them how to, how to hand blend. Yep, pull your fingers further apart. That really helps. The cards do do a better job of blending. Um, we sell large ones and small ones. The small ones are uh, less expensive, but I have to say, if I were going to invest, I would just get the larger ones. And I have invested. I, I've had my pair for, uh, I don't know, over 15 years. So I would say, get the larger ones, you'll be happy. And drum carters are just awesome to have too. Okay, so here we have the stuff that I've hand blended a little bit more, and here's what I blended on the carter. So as you're blending here, what we can do is go ahead and tack down this part of the sky and get it laying down, and then we're going to put a little bit of our blend underneath on top. You do want to felt your pieces all the way. I mean, I know that there are some, mm, I, I wanna say methods or styles that are maybe a little less felted, but it would be really nice if someone touches your piece that it doesn't come apart, it doesn't ruffle under their fingers. So all I'm doing right now is just kind of tacking it in place and not fully felting it. I tend to get all my colors on and then add needle felt it down more and then I'll go back and add more detail where I want it. You're welcome. Oh, I, I'm, I'm glad you all liked seeing the, the hand carding. Yeah, it's really pretty easy once you once you practice a bit. The longer the fibers, the bigger you know you need to flick your wrist, but they are really easy to use. I am using our 42 triangle felting needles. You do see the holes right now, but it's only because the wool has a lot of air in it. Wherever you see a hole, that means there's air in the other bits, so you wanna just keep felting. All right, so I'm gonna take this fiber that we've blended, and this is very similar uh, to the color, but we're just gonna kind of lay it on top and blend that down. <laughs> uh, so Jen says, do I use the craft felt? We covered that in the very beginning, or do you use the wool felt? Craft felt is not as receptive to needle felting. It's thinner. Um, it's usually made with some kind of acrylics and or, and or polyesters, and it just doesn't receive the wool as well. It tends to pucker more and even distort more. So we have a little, we have a really dark sky and we have this transition here. I wanna kind of start bringing this down even into a little more of an arch, just a little bit rounded. And remember, you can go back and patch any colors that you want, wherever you want. You can go back and patch and patch those colors. And we're gonna have some kind of grassy stuff down here. But let's bring some pinks into this mixture. And this pink is kind of wild and fun. And we also have our red indigo. So red indigo or pomegranate or anything like that would start adding some fun to this sky. Uh, Jennifer, we show the, the colors in the beginning, but what I'm working with is indigo. All the colors are shown in the beginning. What I'm working with here is indigo and true violet. 
<laughs> Liz says the comparison between wool and craft felt is like butter to a block of wood. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to quote you on that. Okay, so here's what I want. What I like to do is take something that I've blended and mix it with the next color. So you, it's nice if you can always take this and blend it with what you want to bring into it. So how would we do that in the hand carters? You can do it any way you want. This one is a little bit smoother, so I'm just going to put a little bit of this. Whoops, get this out of my way. I'm going to put a little bit of this on the hand cards. And really, the hand cards are just a little more speed at this point. They're a little bit faster to work with. And then we'll take this mishmash mesh that I made. It's not really mishmash. We'll show some mishmash in a bit. Um, take this stuff and just put it right on top. What you'll notice when you're working with the hand cards is sometimes when you have it stacked this way that your first draw only grabs one color. That's okay. You'll get the rest as you work your way up. I always say don't really worry what happens on the first pass because you're going to go back and get it again. So you can card something as much as you want, uh, you know, two, three, four times until you're happy with the blends. I like it to be a little bit variegated. And you can always take it off and also and flip it over. Your goal is to empty this paddle onto this paddle. And to get the fibers off, you just take this one underneath and lift it right off. So now we have, woo, this really pinky sky. This is going to be kind of the electric sky. And it's a tiny, tiny, tiny little bat, but let's just kind of spread it out and see how we like it. I'm going to kind of arch it right around here. And it doesn't even have to be that tall, but you might like it that way. Oh, is this helpful? So Sammy says that the, the, blending, the blending is helping. That's good news, Sammy. I'm glad. And this is just my way. You know, you might have another way you like to do it. I do like to build up my color palette um, and pre-make the blend so I know what I'm going to be doing. But you, it, do, it is helpful to have the light on top of the dark. And then when you have this one going on top, you don't want a hard line. That's why sometimes I don't even tack it down until I get to that point because I like to sort of tack them down together in unison. Now right here around my moon, I don't want this to come too close to my pink because I'm actually going to lighten that up. So you can just peel that off a bit. And my picture actually is only going to go to right about here, so I'm not worried about everything down here. But I'm going to lighten this sky up a little bit as we work our way down. I'm going to needle felt and look for some of your comments. So Kathleen says, carding to blend the colors is better than carding she does to clean the wool for spinners. <laughs> Let's see. If you left it billowing, it would give cloud formation in the sky. Um, I actually, I don't know what you mean by billowing, if you mean like this. I want this to be flat. Uh, you can add clouds, but I don't want it to be multidimensional. I'm making a flat piece. So notice that wherever you have these transitions, you want the fiber to go this way. You don't want to come at it this way. That's the same whether you're blending on an, a 3D figure or shape or a flat 2D piece. So blending, uh, blending those gradations really helps not see such a hard line. <laughs> Barbara says she's got brand new carters in her drawer and she can do this. Yes, you can, Barbara. Yes, you can. Uh, Kim says dog combs can be effective and some people say that yeah but they are really small so um, dog combs brushes can be very tiny yeah so you might do something different for a silhouette you might have a tree you might have a wolf uh, did someone just say well someone says a dragon or a wolf you might have um, a couple <laughs> walking or sitting, uh, I don't know. Lots of things you can have uh, uh, as a silhouette. Trees, I wanted to bring in some pictures. In our group, Living Felt Friends, um, there have been some lovely night skies recently. And if you don't belong to that group, it's under Facebook and it's just called Living Felt Friends. 
Now, if this is just one sky, you may not love the colors or you may like them. You know, your sky can be just any way you want. I really did want kind of a, a pinky, a pinky purpley sky. And we could even go back and add clouds where we want. Right around this moon, I want it to not be too dark. I actually want it to almost have this hazy ring of a glow. So we can move towards that. And I just want it to kind of carry down here. So I need to blend a little bit more of these colors and get a little lighter color going in here. You could use, uh, I'm gonna use some of my uh, cotton white. You could use um, a light gray, which I didn't bring in with me. Uh, you could use uh, a medium gray, whatever you like. You could use just a different pink. We have lots of different pink blends uh, that you could try and work with too. And I just wanna blend in my white a little bit. And Remember, if you're, if you're felting along with us today, just say hashtag felt along so we can see what you're making. Someone says, do I use the fine teeth carters? These are about a 72 point, which is a good general purpose carter. Yep, so Aiden says she wants to do this for some autumn and winter themed stuff. And I've decided this year, so last year we did a, um, last year we did a little winter scene, a little tiny, tiny four inch winter scene and a cabin in the snow. And this year I've decided we're gonna try and figure out how we can do um, a number of like little Christmas card scenes together. So I hope you'll tune in for that. And I'm just gonna blend this a little bit. This is almost like a little raspberry, a little raspberry glow that I just want a right around that moon. I want to blend it just a little bit more. So notice I have that white patch. You can just put it right back here on the carters and just blend it all up. This stuff is short, so it does blend really easily. I just want that kind of to feel a little, like a little bit of a haze right around here. What's fun is if you don't blend it too hard, meaning like all the way, you can kind of twist it and turn it until you see the colors that you like. Oh, Linda says she's going to do a galaxy. Um, Kate says, do you find the wool goes bobbly sometimes when you hand card? And Kate, I think that, um, if you do the flicking method, if you watch that little section again and you make sure that you're flicking and not letting the fibers get trapped underneath the hand cards, that it shouldn't be pilling on you. The fiber you know, you know, shouldn't pill up if you're not um, letting it get tangled up in there. It's possible to do it without, is kind of the best I can say, without it getting bobbly. I think that's what you mean, like nepping up. Okay. So now I have just a little bit of a glow and where I don't want it to be so white, I can just pluck those bits out and add a little bit of pink in. I just want it to be a little hazy shooting off there. And I'm gonna do one more little blend just to get us down here to the horizon uh, of these guys. And you might put this on a pillow, you might make a little greeting card. You know, you might take your pictures and then just turn them into something else. You could needle felt a picture and then turn it into a magnet, like copy it and do something different with it. I'd love to see what some people are doing with their images. On YouTube, we have a uh, video tutorial from last year where we suggest ways you might mount your works. So if you're looking for ways to mount and finish your pieces, you might watch that. And I think it's called How to Hang and Mount Your Fiber Art. So Jennifer says, just watching this makes me want to try my first 2D. Absolutely, you know, 2D is really fun and safe. And look, it doesn't have to be realism. It can just be playful. There's nothing wrong with playful. 
So there's my little blend. This is the final one to kind of finish up the sky and you can choose this more blendy bit or the more chunky side or keep going and get it all to blend. I'm going to tuck this under here just to get us down to the horizon. And again, my picture is going to terminate somewhere right about here. Oh, Jalen says she's going to put little flat scenes on matchboxes. That sounds adorable. When's the last time you saw a matchbox? Uh, Carolina, of course, is going to do a Chihuahua silhouette. <laughs> nice, Carolina. Um, Kristen says the blending looks easy. I like hearing that because it is. Um, okay, here we go. I'm just going to get this so that we can kind of get to uh, the kitty part. So we're going to needle felt this down. And remember, anything you don't like, once you kind of get it tacked down, you could either take it off or cover it up. Take it off or cover it up. You just can't get it wrong. You just have to know whether you like it. And if you peel it off before you go too far, then that'll be easy. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying they're gonna try their first two Ds. That's really fun. Now I'm gonna show you something right here. If you don't like the blend, I'm gonna show you what you can do about that right there. I probably would like to add some grays in here to kind of, you know, darken the sky in spots. I'm working on another sky, but I didn't get far enough to bring it in to, to you. But I love purples and blues and blacks in the sky as well. So remember, just go like this. You don't want to, you don't want to make a hard line this way. Just blend everything out from that center point. And if you don't like this, like let's say this right here, you don't like how it looks, Go back with this little bit you blended, take this and just stretch it thin, make it like a thin little layer and just lay it right on top so that you have the, the blend just like you like it. It feels natural, it doesn't feel forced or just tacked on top. You could blend little bits of this in here to soften this part so it's not so extreme. MC1 batting, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's our batting. We work with it all the time. So by our, I mean living felt. It does have little tiny bits of vegetable matter in it because we do not carbonize our fiber, which is a chemical burnout process that is, you know, kind of intense. We don't subject the fiber or the environment to that. So just pick out the vegetable matter when you come to it. If it's on an inner layer, it doesn't even matter. Um, and usually it just sits right on top. So notice that I'm just piecing right over this piece and I hope you all can see that. Um, and so I often will, you know, pat down, pat down with my hands, but I think that looks a little more gradual now and you can see that we, we buried those white lines. So tack down again and just be willing to add colors or, you know, a little thin layer wherever you like. Now, of course, this color, this sky could, could look a lot different. You could do five, six different, you know, shades. This is kind of a quick method to show you how you might blend using your hands or a hand carter, how to use the resist to give yourself a real nice clean line, um, which the resist was, for those of you who joined late, we just cut out the moon from our PDF download. There's a PDF download for this, and I'll link to it after we're all done. And um, now we're gonna do, let's go ahead and put in kitty before we put grass, because I want the kitty to be uh, behind the grass. And I will, of course, spend the evening and I'll go back and I'll flatten all of this out. You can use, you know, I have three needles rubber banded together, or you could, um, you know, use a single needle or a multi-needle tool. But here is, here is kitty. And again, you can freehand this or use our little PDF printout. And I have some black right here. So this is our black onyx. And here is one way to do kitty. Just one way to do kitty. Which is kind of like, it's kind of like the moon. Okay. 
Uh, Sis asks, would I lift the this this off the mat once in a while? No, not when I'm just doing a 2D like this. I won't, Sis, because if I lift it, then all this wool that's poked through to the other side will be sitting on the back, and I want it to sit nice and flat uh, while I work, so that it's not so that it's all nice and even. Um, with that said, I'm also not using very aggressive needles, so. If your needles are too aggressive, then that can kind of be a challenge. And that meaning that it'll poke too far into your foam and entangle in your foam. So use a light gauge needle uh, if you can for a process like this. Okay, so I'm just gonna start Kitty by putting the black right behind him. And this is kind of like you would use a cookie cutter. Where he's really narrow at the neck, we don't want all that wool to deal with. So just peel it off now and kind of get it a little more towards the shape. And, you know, like I said, you can freehand this or do whatever you want. You don't have to follow this exactly. Um, and I'm just going to needle felt around his shape and get that outline going. I'm gonna add the tail. I'll come back and add the tail because it's too spindly and little. So I'm just using my fingers to hold the template in place and I'm gonna needle felt around him. You could also cut him out, you know, and fill in the circle. Either way works. So I know my fingers are probably in your way. I'm gonna go around the top of the head. If you've needle felt it kind of around him, then as you get your shape, then what you can do is fold the wool back in Fold the wool back in to get a nice clean line. And you can keep a little shape up here if you wanna see you know, what he looks like. Fold this wool in. This is why you wanted to tack down the moon first so that, that white wool is laying down and doesn't fold back over on your kitty. So use your finger to fold that wool back in and tack it down. Tammy says, how do you tell if a needle you're using is too aggressive? Well, I'd say just, you know, start playing with them. We have a little uh, file that we've suggested people start to organize their needles if you don't know what they are by coarse, medium, and fine. Um, but if it's too aggressive, what happens is as you poke your wool into the foam, then it really starts to get entangled and dig up your foam. And you just don't really need something that aggressive. So work with a 38 or finer. And I'm gonna fold this up here too. We're gonna to cover all this little bit with grass. So you see how we just kind of use the, use the outline to kind of shape the kitty and then just go right into the side where you want it to make it a little more narrow. Now I mentioned my kitty was, was freehand and it was. So you're welcome to find your way or use this just to kind of get the top of the head shape. And scoot him right underneath there so you can come back and add your add your bits. You know, your kitty doesn't have to match exactly. And if you get some black into your white, well then go back and add white over it. And if you get white into your black, you know, then go back and add black over it. You just can't get it wrong. You can outline him with yarn if you want to. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of round the top of his head make this flat, and then we'll just put the little ears on. And the little wispy bits on the side, his little whiskers. Jennifer asks uh, the same question, sis did, do I lift it up? No, I'm not gonna lift it up. I'm gonna wait till the end. I don't want all that bulky wool underneath to get in my way. I'm just gonna needle felt this until he's done. Okay, so now let's just put our ears on and you can round the top of the head too. So the template is kind of a little challenging to work with. So just build your kitty here. You're not gonna get him wrong. I'm gonna add, just round the top of his head before I put the ears on. Just put a little bit of wool on there and use your needle to guide it and make it round. Get all the loose fibers back in. This will have a real nice presentation if your lines are really clean. So again, if you got white in the black or the black in the white, then go back and clean that up after. Pull off a little pinch just for the ear. <laughs> Jill says maybe no problema should make an appearance in the moon. That's a good idea. You can kind of twist this in your fingers a little bit, but you don't have to. You can just make it like the suggestion of an ear. 
you can tack a little bit in the head and then pull this out to the point that you want. Just kind of notice, force that arch and then tack it down right in the arch that you want. So you don't have to shape it off or shape it on the foam or anything. Shape it right on your piece and tack it down lightly at first until you get it kind of going where you want it. Let's do that again. We're just gonna pull off a little piece. I'm gonna fold it in half so it has a little bit of density to it. Shape it a little bit and then we'll pull this ear out kind of where we want it. I tack it on the head first and then just pull it out to where you want and shape it. It is easy to freehand, Kristen said. It is easy, you know, give yourself just a little model and then be willing to give yourself just a little room. You know, everything doesn't have to match exactly, um, exactly. So give yourself a little room to play and explore. Now this might look like a, we don't, a goat right now. We don't know what it is, but if we just give his uh, face a little bit of whiskers out, maybe, and once we, he gets a tail, maybe he'll feel like a kitty. So I'm just gonna take the wool again, and this time I'm gonna let the loose bits go out, and we're just gonna shape some whiskers for him here. Whiskers are like the fluff of his face, kind of the opposite. Uh, his are kind of, you know, coming off here. Just to give him a little bit of character. And just keep playing with him until you're happy. And I'm gonna see what some of y'all are saying. <laughs> um, Somebody said they used chalk. Maybe you're talking about getting getting your designs out. Yeah, there's any number of ways to get your to get your design out. Uh, but when you're just going right on the wool, it can be a little the loose felted wool is maybe not always as receptive. Now we're almost out of time here, so I'm going to keep shaping my kitty. Let's get a little bit of a tail in there and just a little bit of grass. And I think the tail is going to make him feel a little more like kitty. Uh, one more whisker over here. And the fun thing is you can take your time. I mean, I always go fast on Wooly Wednesday, but I don't go fast when I work by myself. Uh, that I just don't have any reason to. So I'm just going to get his little tail kind of how I want it. And in fact, why don't we just start with some, some point like this curly cue. We're gonna go under, I'm gonna go under and just guide this wool, just tack it down how you want it. Let it be loose and fluffy at first, and then you can go back and gather up all the other little bits. And now he looks a little more like a kitty now that we've given him a, a big tail. And you can shape the tail since you just basically got the idea down. Now you can shape it and tack all this down where you want it and flatten it. Pam says, one reason she likes felting is the ease of being able to change what she wants to do. And I so agree with that. Now I'm probably gonna fuss with, with my kitty a little bit and his tail, but let's look at just getting some grass into place. Um, someone says, the time goes very fast for a woolly Wednesday. <laughs> Vicki says, yes, it's a cat. Don says he needs a fluffy tail. Yep, you can make yours however you want. Um, so we're going to put some grass in here. Now, I'm not going to fuss over it a bunch. Um, you guys can do it however you want. I'm going to get some basic grass in place. This is my um, lemongrass. And so I'm going to break up lemongrass and bamboo together. I'm going to focus on the insides here because uh, my picture's not going to be so wide. You can let some of your grass come right up over kitty and we're gonna alternate a little bit with the bamboo. Now you might have, you know, this is a sunset picture, so, or, you know, a dusk picture, so probably you wouldn't see this much of the grass, but whatever. This is like felting, so we get to make up our own rules, whatever we want. And I'm going to wrap him up here in one second. What I wanna show you for those who 
uh, missed last time, the fiber mishmash, what we're going to do is get a little uh, fiber mishmash going in this grass just to finish out our picture. So I've got all this wool down and in place and that's kind of my my base that I want for the grass area. area. <laughs> uh, Luoma says the moon looks like it's glowing and I might fuss with that moon a little bit Luoma. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay so what I have here uh, one of the fairies made me up this little fiber mishmash. If you missed that a few weeks ago we did a little fiber mishmash lesson uh, where we made like a little autumn tree losing its leaves. So we have a few different kinds of neps. We have some sari silk waste and some tussa. And all we do is cut it up into like a little fiber confetti. And we mix it with a little bit of wool so that you'll have something to anchor it down with. So all I did was add a little bit of my MC1 in tiny chunks right on top of it. And then we're just going to sprinkle it in our grass and add some of this texture right on top. And I'm just going to tack it all down at the same time. So by blending it with wool, it's going to help you trap it. And I'll be pulling up some of this grass so it's a little not quite so even. But I'm just going to spread this out just for fun. So in this way, you can add tuss of silk and neps and whatever you want into your grass and just give it a little bit of texture. And again, the wool just helps anchor it all down. Okay, so now, you know, I might make my grass a little more wispy in places, but just for the moment, just so you can kind of see how this goes, just anchor it down. And where stuff isn't sticking, stretch a little bit of wool right over the top. How much do you felt it in? Deb says, Deb, I'm going to felt this all the way down. This, these bits will add texture all on their own. Um, so I'm going to felt this all the way flat until it's done. So keep tacking yours down and you might want to give your grass a little bit of dimension. You might want to wisp some bits up now, pull them so that it's not flat so that you have like little blades of grass and you can always go back and add more later too just so that it feels a little playful maybe kind of like the kitty is and not just this real hard line but keep tacking yours down until it's all blended just how you want uh someone asked will i put this in a frame you know what this one because it's kind of a fun little seasonal thing i'll probably just put a hard backing on it uh like uh, one of the Pellon uh, super thick interfacing so that I could just prop it up in like a little frame holder, like picture holder, like a little plate rack rather than, uh, a, you know, dedicating a frame to it. At least for me and this piece, like I said, it's just kind of a little seasonal fun thing. So work on yours so that you get all these transitions just like you want like i might cover these bits up just a little bit and i'm going to needle felt all this down but in this lesson we worked with hand blending mc1 uh, building our moon with a resist and i probably bring this grass up right here to you know where my moon is so that it's sitting on the horizon um, and working with our fiber mishmash as well so i hope that is <laughs> helpful and I'm reading your comments. Some of you are now ready to try 2D, <laughs> which of course for me is exciting. I, I want you to try everything you wanna try and get over your inhibitions, whatever they are. But I hope that if you needle felt this project that you'll post it in our group, Living Felt Friends here on Facebook. 